it is a delight to be here with you to uh, kick off your forum. Uh, I understand that you are going to have some speakers to talk to you about leadership and about uh, issues. What I'd like to do tonight is to talk to you about a few of the challenges uh, that we face in international politics and how we might uh, address them. But I want to say first that uh, I was indeed fortunate enough to be the 66th Secretary of State of the United States of America. There is no greater honor than to serve this country that I love so much. There is no greater honor than to represent this country abroad and to see its strengths, to see its challenges, but to know that you are representing the freest, the most compassionate, and the most generous country in the world. And we should be very grateful that the United States of America is also the most powerful. Now that said, it was terrific being Secretary of State, and I enjoyed it very much, but it's also really nice to be done. Uh, I can now get up in the morning, I can read the newspaper, I don't think that I have to do anything about what's in it. And uh, it's, uh, it's really a joy, but I do think and reflect from time to time on the challenges that we faced over the last eight years, uh, challenges that will, I think, continue for many generations because they are indeed generational challenges. They're not the kind of challenges that will be solved by one or two or three or four administrations. But the United States of America has done that kind of work before. Uh, we were the country after World War II essentially left standing to, uh, to reflect the values of the free world and to protect and defend the freedom against the scourge of communism. And because we stayed steadfast over that period of more than 40 years, resisting Soviet power and resisting the lure of the ideas of communism, I was fortunate enough in 1989 to 1991, the last time that I was in government, to be the White House Soviet Specialist at the end of the Cold War. And frankly, it doesn't get much better than that. I got a chance to be a part of the liberation of Eastern Europe. I got to be able to see the unification of Germany completely on Western terms and to see the peaceful collapse of the Soviet Union. But I recognized that, in fact, I was just harvesting good decisions that had been taken over the years before. Because if you go back to the time immediately after World War II, those of you who are students of history or of politics will know that in 1946, the Italian communists won 48% of the vote and the French communists 46% of the vote. The question wasn't, would Eastern Europe be communist? The question was, would Western Europe be communist? 